Shalom and welcome. My name is Rabbi Yitzchak Shapira, and I'm the founder of Avat Ami Ministries. Avat Ami Ministries is a Jewish organization that is focused on the restoration of the Jewish people to the Jewish Messiah, while also at the same time committed to teach the nations about the Jewish Messiah in the proper context. And what could be a better context to learn about the Jewish Messiah than the Torah and the prophets? This Shabbat, every, every week we're getting together and we're learning from the Torah. Here I have a, a live uh, Hebrew scroll of the first five book of Moses where we learn, we open the Torah and we look word by word from the Torah uh, what, what it has to tell us about the Messiah, about the redemption, or as we call it in Hebrew, the Geulah. Last Shabbat, we were in Parashat Tazria. Tazria means conceive. It's talking about the word conceive. And we start the, the, the word of Parashat Tazria. He reading about the woman that will conceive and to bring a child into the world. Wor world. Now, this Shabbat is Parashat Metzora, or literally mean the Torah of leper. Usually in most in most years, we read those two portions together but because they are connected. They are both talking about leprosy. Now, it's also important to understand that usually the name of a portion has to do with the content of the portion. Now, this is one of the rare exceptions. The Torah portion last week, Parashat Tazria, start with the word Tazria conceived, but it spent only about one line on this woman that will conceive a child and then it's continue on to talk about the leper, okay? So it's really have to do with leprosy, yet the name is Tazria. This Torah portion, this Shabbat, okay, has to do, it's have the one name uh, Metzorah, but it's really have a very little to do with the leper. It has to do much more with the cleansing of the leper. It, instead of the leprosy itself. So it's have to, it's, it seems like it is backwards. I want to examine with you the deeper meaning beyond the Torah. Okay? In Sanhedrin 99, it tells us that all the words of the Torah and the prophets are for one thing, to prophesy about the Mashiach. I would like to combine for a moment those Torah portions together because I believe that they speak of the entire process of redemption. Those two portions are talking about the redemption and the resurrection of the Jewish people and also redemption and the resurrection of the Messiah himself. First of all, who is he talking about in Parashat Azria, Leviticus uh, uh, 12, last week, when he's talking about this child is being conceived? The sages uh, uh, are clear about that. It is talking about the birth of the Mashiach, actually. They say that this entire Torah portion, La Shabbat, is talking about the Geulah. And it's, interestingly enough, it starts with life. The word Tazria, or is rooted in the Hebrew word zera. Zera is a sperm or a seed. He's talking about life, okay? He's talking about Mashiach Tzitkenu, Messiah of Righteousness, who will come to the world. He will be belted out to bring life. This is the reason that it says um, in Psalm chapter 2, verse 7, it says, on the Messiah, it says, I will tell of the law of the Lord, Adonai, and he will say to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. The word in Hebrew, today, doesn't have to mean now, today. The word hayom actually ha can mean uh, in a variety of places, or as the rabbis told us in this, in this passage, mean today from eternity I have begotten you. Why does it say today from eternity I have begotten you? Because the Messiah, as we know from Sanhedrin, um, 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 excuse me, from Psachim 54, that the Messiah name was known from the beginning of the time, Genesis 1-2, and the Spirit of the Lord hovering over there, the Spirit of Messiah was there from beginning of the time. Now, here in the Torah portion, it doesn't talk about the birth of the Messiah in that essence. When we read about the birth of this child, we are talking about the redemption, the Geulah, his ultimate and final revelation in the world. 
So what I'm saying to you, the spirit of Messiah is already operating today. Remember our sages tell us that the world is divided to 6,000 years. The first 2,000 years, the years of chaos. Second thousand, 2,000 years as the years of, we call the years of the law. And the last 2,000 years, the years of the Mashiach, which we are right now in. We are in 5774, okay? So we are already in the Messianic uh, uh, times right now. The word there today, I have begun and you said that the Messiah was there from the beginning of time, but uh, now this Torah portion speak about his re revelation. We are talking about his final revelation to the world. There is not a coincidence, people of God, that his final revelation go in correspondence with the leper. Why? Because we know that he called it to Sanhedrin 98 from last week we were lesson that the Messiah, known by the name of what? The leper, or in Aramaic, Chivra, and why is it called uh, the leper? He is sitting in the gates of Rome. Interesting enough, Rome represents Christianity. Why is he sitting in the, uh, on, on the gates of Rome? Because he is in exile. In exile from who? From the Jewish people. Why? Because they have not rejected him. He's still dead. They still, he's, st he's still dead to them. He's sitting on the, on the, on the gates of Rome. And why is he, he, what is he doing there? It says he put bandages. He put bandages of the sickness of Israel. That's why he says in Isaiah 53, in connection to Sanhedrin 98, on the leper, he says, he, he taking our sicknesses or upon himself. Machovenu Savlam. Savlam. He took the wounds upon himself. And we thought he is full of blemishes. Nagua. The word there, blemish. Nagua, as you read in the Torah portion, uh, this Shabbat, is derived in the word nega. And who is the one who have nega? He's the leper. Okay? Let us dig for a moment deeper into the Torah portion. As I, I believe that both Parashat Tazria and the Parashat Di Shabbat, Metzora has to do with the final cycle of redemption that goes like that. Life of Mashiach, birth of the Mashiach, okay, into the world, his death, and then the final resurrection, okay? Let's follow this with me. The Torah portion start with the word or La Shabbat, on the Tazria, okay? And who is the one with Tazria? Is this boy. And who is this boy? Let's talk about the Mashiach, okay? Tazria, the word Zera can be taught about this in terms of agriculture, too. When you take something, a seed, the word in Hebrew for a seed is the word Zera, the same word of the Torah portion. What do you do with the seed? You take the Zera and you put the Zera into the uh, ground, into the soil. And if you know anything about agriculture, you know that this is not just sprout out, spring out. He become rotten. The, the little seed become rotten. He, he dies in essence, okay? And then after he dies, he mix himself with the soil and become one with the soil, okay? And then a uh, tree springs out, okay? And then fruit is being produced. This is a picture of the entire process of the Geula, of the redemption. And this is what the Torah portion walk us through. From Tazria, uh, the, the, the seed in the ground, to uh, the death, to the resurrection. The redemption, friends, the Geula, what we call in Hebrew, the redemption, has similarly three levels. The Seed has to be put into the ground, okay? It has to become one with the soil. You have to die, and then it has to be resurrected, res resurrected. Interestingly enough, our sages tell us that the time of 2,000 years ago, not more, not less, is a time that the, the seed appear in the world. And then the last 2,000 years have been the times that we call the sickness, rikavon in Hebrew a time where the seed die. And the Torah portion, Parashat Tazriah, speak about the final, final, this parasha, Metzora, this week, leprosy, deal with the coming of the Mashiach. Isn't it interesting that Yeshua, the Mashiach himself, says in the epistle, Igeret Yohanan, in the gospel, 
excuse me, in the gospel, according to the Yohanan, he says, I didn't choose you because I, you didn't, excuse me, you didn't choose me. Lo atem bachaltem bi. I chose you. And what did I tell you? To go and make a fruit and make a lasting fruit. Okay? And your fruit will stand. Why did he use this analogy? He's using the Torah portion, the Shabbat. He's giving us a picture of the resurrection of the leper who is ultimately going to be resurrected. What is he talking about? The final step of the redemption. It's important for us to read the Torah through the spiritual eyes. The zera, the seed, is clearly the Mashiach. That's why Yeshua says you will make a fruit that will last. Who is the seed? Yeshua. That's why in Ephesians 2, it says that the cornerstone is Messiah himself. He is the seed. So it's important to us to see that in the terms of the Mashiach, okay? Look with me at the Torah portion this Shabbat. The Torah portion, this Shabbat, again, starts with a very negative term. It starts with the word Metzorah. That's the name. But it has nothing to do with the Metzorah. It actually has to do with something else. Let us all start in the Torah portion, and let us read it together. It says, Vayedaber Adonai el Moshe le'emor. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Zot tiye Torah ta Metzorah. This will be Torah. This will be the Torah of the Metzorah. Why a Torah? Because it's, it's, it's a statue. It's a law that God said. What? Be'yom taharato. In the day of its cleansing. The entire Torah does not deal here with the leper, but it deals with the day of its cleansing. What is the day of the cleansing has to do this? With the day of his appearance. Second appearance. Remember he was born? And now he's going to be, that's what the Parashat Azriya start with, and now is the day of him coming out. It's the day of his appearance. It's the day of his coming, second coming. And what is he says? Vehova el HaKohenim was brought to the high priest, Vehatsa HaKohen, and the Kohen would have to go El Michutz Lamachana outside the camp, Vera Cohen and the, 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 the high priest had the sole responsibility to see Hina Nirpa, Nega Atzarat, was he healed? Mina Tzarua. So there was only one entity that was responsible to, de, to de, determine the leper, who we know now is the Messiah condition. And who it is? It is the high priest. Friends, what I'm suggesting to you today, that Parashat Metzorah, it's not dealing with the leper, but it's dealing with the day of his cleansing. And what is this day of his cleansing? It's the day of his resurrection. And in parallel, since the leper represents us, also the day of the Jewish people resurrection and, and, and the world resurrection. So it's a parallel of the Mashiach and us. So in Dargata, in, in the Pshat level, in the simplistic level, the Metzorah is each one of us. In the level above, the soul, the secret, the Metzorah, it's talking about his final revelation and redemption into the world. Notice that the Torah says that only the priest could go out and check him, okay? The high priest had to go outside the camp, okay? And... It's interesting, though, that it says here in the Hebrew, it says, Vehova HaMetzora El HaKohen. Somebody had to bring the leper to the high priest. Now think about this for a second. If he's outside the camp, how can, and, and the high priest had to go outside the camp, who could have brought him to him, right? It doesn't make sense because he was by himself outside the camp. There is, there is um, a remez here that the leper also had to make a teshuva, repentance, before coming before the priest. It's important to us to remember that teshuva is important part of the redemption. Without repentance, teshuva, there is no redemption. It's a point that the Torah says, the metzorah, though, I ever, he made a teshuva because somebody already brought me from the camp. So it's meaning he's still just partially unclean. But he uncleans it. What have to happen next? They have to slaughter the bird and sprinkle the blood. Why? Because a teshuva is important, but the power of the blood is equally important. You need both. 
And this is a remezir. And who is the one that is outside the camp here? We know that from last week, it is the leper. And who is the leper who is uh, considered him as dead? It's the Messiah himself. This is the reason it says in Zechariah 12, 10, and I will pour on the house of David, on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, a uh, spirit of space, uh, a spirit of grace, a spirit of mercy, and they will look upon me who they pierce, and they will make a eulogy. Not mourn, friends. Scratch this from your Bible. The subdue a love. They will make a eulogy. You make a eulogy over only one who is dead. And why is he dead? Because he's been about outside the camp for 2,000 years. That is the reason. Sukkot Rakhtate 52b tell us that he's not necessarily talking about the righteous, righteous of Israel, but he's talking about the Messiah himself. This is what's happening in the day of the Geula. The leper is going to come back. In the fourth Aliyah, this Torah portion, we see the final Gehula, the final redemption. We started it in Tazria with life, and then the Metzorah died, and then we read about the life itself, the final resurrection. And we're reading about another very weird condition, really weird condition of leprosy that have to do not just with a person's face or their beard, has to do with a person, with a person's walls inside their house. The leprosy, because it was a spiritual uh, condition that had to do with the sin of the mouth, infected not just the person, but his livestock. There is a Musar in dust for us. It's a different sermon, but I will leave you with that. When you speak against people, it's not just going to affect you on the physical but it's going to affect your livestock. It's going to affect your finances. It's going to affect other things in your life. Take it for what it's worth. And listen to what I want to have to do. We have, we have to take those stones and throw them out. Let's read together what it says. Let's turn to the Torah portion, this Shabbat Mitzvah, and we will paraphrase this, this powerful uh, 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 passage together. It says, Ve'edaber Adonai, El Moshe ve'el Aaron, and Moses to Aaron. God spoke to Moses and Aaron to say, So you're going to come to the land of Canaan, Asher ani noten lachem, that I give you le'achuza to a house, v'nagtati negat sarat babayt, and let us say, and they say, and I give you, and there was a plague of leprosy babayt, eretz achuzatchem, in the house, okay? Uba asher lo abayt, and the one who hold the house, so again, he had to come to the high priest and tell him that. So he had to come to a high priest and to tell him, I think I have a nega. I think I have a leprosy in my arm. So immediately, the first thing that had to happen is everybody had to evacuate the house. So... Before even the high priest even reached the house, they had to, they had to come, they had to come uh, and, and get out of the house. So there will be still, the Tamer will not be there. So then the, the high priest would come, so he saw, it says he saw because it's a spiritual thing. The Kohen saw. The leprosy. So if the leprosy was in the, in the um, walls of the house, and what it was, it was It was like a dent, dent that is made a green slime, basically. Or a damdamet, or in the color of blood. Their, uh, their, um, their uh, appearance will be kind of on the lower lower wall, okay? So the high priest left the house, to the openest, so the house was locked down for seven days. And he returned in the seventh day, so he had to reevaluate the wall. Okay, so he said that they had to break down the leprosy. And how did they break? Destroy it. 
destroy it. Pull it down. Break it down. Break it out. They have to take down the wall. You're talking about having a, a, a remediation in your home? It had to be pulled out. They had to take the stones and to pull them out to a place that is unclean. The entire parasha, Torah portion, has to deal with what we read at the beginning, to bring the leper, okay, to a place of resurrection, to a place of cleanness. It started with him, himself, with his mouth, and now we see that the, the principle expanded that the leper livestock, the uh, possession and property also have to be done with this. Everything had to be destroyed. If leprosy touched it, but I want to tell you that the Torah portion, it deals with the final geula, the final redemption, and the resurrection of the leper. Who is the leper? The leper is you and I. This Torah deals with you and I. And the only solution is to take the leprosy out and destroy them with a living stone of the living God. God himself, through the Messiah, had to take those dirty, filthy stones that fill with leprosy to pick him with, own hand, with his own hand and to take them out of the camp. God himself, the Messiah, has done this. We read in 1 Peter chapter 2, the explanation to this Torah. What, Shaul, what, what Petru, Shimon Kepha says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by human but chosen by God, precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Yeshua HaMashiach. For the scripture says, So I lay in Zion a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who will trust in him will never be put to shame. By the way, it doesn't say the one who trusted him. It's a, it's a quote from Isaiah 28, 16. It says, Those who will be evaluated by him, those who will trust upon his merit, Friends, I believe in perfect friends that all the words of the prophets are true. Our merit comes through the Messiah who takes those stones. Why? So you and I will become pure in the final resurrection. Now to you who believe this stone will be precious. Does he say that the stone will be precious through the Torah? Not the Torah, through the Messiah. The Messiah of Israel is greater. But to those who do not believe, those who do not believe that Shimon Kepha said, and quote again from Isaiah, the stone of the builder rejected has become the cornerstone, and the stone causes people to stumble, and a rock makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are chosen people. He's talking to the Jewish people here, extending to the nations too. A royal priest to the holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of, of, of him who has called you out of darkness into what wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you're people of God. Once you had received mercy, but now you have received, once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. In essence, what Shimon Kepha telling us in extrapolation, the mindful midrash of this Torah portion, that the nega, the blemish, all of it, physical, emotional, spiritual, in our livestock, in our possession, have to turn, remember the word nega, you flip the letter, to unig. And this is coming to only faith in the Jewish Messiah. This is a picture, by the way, of the building in the final Geula, the final redemption, of the building of the temple, Beta Mikdash, the spiritual Beta Mikdash. The leper, who is the Messiah, took upon himself the death, the curses, and the leprosy of us. And those who believe in him, it says, it will be like they are, because he's going to build it with a living stone. They it will be like a bet mikdash for them. 
You don't have to wait for Yeshua to return to have the redemption and Geulah today. You can have it today. You can have it today. The day of redemption can be today. If you have not given your life to Yeshua, Mashiach in spirit, and to, today it can be the Yom Geulah in him because he is the master builder. Matter of fact, it's continuing in Isaiah 8.14, and it says, And he shall become a mikdash, a temple, but for a stone or stumbling of the rock of the offense for both the house of Israel and the gene of the snare on the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay? How can he become a stumbling and a temple at the same time? Friends, if we try to carry out the leprosy ourselves, to Torah, mitzvot, tikkun, we are, will be filthy with the slime of the leprosy. But if we believe that the Messiah come to take the leprosy out, to take it out for the final resurrection, is it's life, is coming to the world, then his own death, and then allowing him to be Lord, and resurrect us. Only then, only then, the building of the temple, of our spiritual temple can happen. It's called Negev, because if we don't believe in him, there is no hope for leprosy. But if we do believe, this will be a light, a, a, a season of light, of redemption of all of us, and Bezrat Hashem, all of Israel together, it's interesting that Zerubbabel, in conclusion, Zerubbabel, in conclusion, uh, in Zechariah 4, let me throw this at you to take to the Shabbat with you, had a vision. He received a vision to Zechariah, and the vision was, build Jerusalem. Go ahead and build it. And he's overwhelmed. And then the angel of the world, oh Lord uh, appeared to him and tell him, not by might and not by power, but by my spirit. Rabbi David Kimchi explained that the spirit, according to the Targum, means the spirit of the Messiah. Not by might, not by power, but by my Messiah, say the Lord of armies, Jerusalem will be built. The temple will be built. Spirit of grace and supplication is the only way that Jerusalem, the temple, our spiritual temple can be built. What is the upshot of this explosive Torah portion? Start with the Tazria, with the fact that the Messiah already worked in the world today. He is called the leper, and why is he appearing to leper? To take out the leprosy. But he first has like a seed in the ground how to die, so is the Messiah how to die. He has been resurrected, he is alive today. But it's your choice. In my choice to call upon him and say, Do you want the living son to come today and build the temple of our heart? May it be so upon all of us and all of Israel. Amen and Shabbat Shalom. Mitraot.